So day two of interviews at the OpenStack PTG, and I'm speaking with Tony Breeds. If you could introduce yourself, tell us who you work for and what projects you work on, that would be a good place to start. Sure. Uh, my name is Tony Breeds, as Rich just said. Um, I'm the current stable PTL. I'm a little bit loud and annoying, so I tend to work on a lot of projects. Um, this being stable PTL means I touch the stable branches of a lot of projects. I have to work closely with the infrastructure team, so I've got a good understanding of Zool, Jenkins, and Project Config, although that understanding is going to change with the Zool v3 work. Um, I came into OpenStack as a Nova developer, and that's kind of where my heart is, but it's actually the thing I touch the least these days. Uh, did I say I worked for Red Hat? If I, didn't. I think you did, yeah. So let's start with um, the, the stable branch maintenance. Tell us what that means. All right, so OpenStack has a much longer life cycle than the six month development life cycle, right? Uh, and originally the stable branch came from distributors that wanted to have a place in the community, they're totally good community citizens, they wanted to have a place in the community that they could collaborate on backboarding of patches and bug fixes and security releases and all that sort of stuff. Um, and my job really is to help the project teams understand what is and maybe isn't an appropriate thing to backport, like changing your config file between a minor release of your project is probably going to hurt deployers and operators. Um, adding new features is probably not good for code stability. So it's, there's a little bit of project education in there. There's a little bit of project wrangling. Um, and really, it's just about making sure that OpenStack as a whole, uh, continues to work. Um, there's always contention about, we keep it around for, we keep two stable branches around. Um, maybe we could keep more, maybe we could keep them around for longer than 12 months in total. Um, that's always a topic for a conversation. It's a fun topic. And then of course, various vendors might have a stable branch that, that lives for for years and years, and I know a number of them do. So. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, vendors do tend to have stable branches that last beyond what we do in the community, and that's where some of the uh, tension comes from, right? They would like to be able to do, continue to do the collaboration in the community for longer than the community has the resources to maintain. So, you know, it's not just about keeping a few Git branches and a Garrett instance around. You've got to keep all of the infrastructure functional. For example, were we to have kept Mataka around for longer, we'd need to be able to support Trusty and Xenial in the gate for however long we keep Mataka around, right? And then if that time span touches on the Rocky release, then Infra has to support three different versions of Ubuntu in the gate and keep them all functional, keep them all secure. So there's a trade-off between the compute resources that we have and you know, how many jobs we can actually put through, and the human resources that we have, and how much time we can spend maintaining the infrastructure. And that, at the moment, that's where the line's being drawn. We found two branches for six months, uh, for 12 months total, is about all we can maintain, but with more time and uh, resources, we could definitely do that. Of course, you could also think that that makes a business opportunity for, for vendors. Sure, it gives them a point of differentiation. So what about, um, requirements, what is involved in that project? All right, well, requirements is another one of these things that kind of touches a lot of projects, right? We maintain, I'll call it a database, but really it's just a text file, of all of the uh, libraries that it's okay to use in OpenStack. And we've vetted those for license compatibility and, and so on and so forth. And then we maintain a list of versions of those libraries that it's okay to use. Uh, so that should you grab uh, Neutron and Nova and Heat, they all have, I wouldn't say identical because pragmatism, they don't always get it right all the time, but they have a level of guarantee that they're going to be able to be installed on the same box without using technologies like virtual ends and containers to isolate the services. So you can re have reasonable confidence that you can get your services on there and not find that one of them needs a version of a library that the other one has explicitly excluded, and then you can't have them on the same ones. So again, there's a lot of 
team education like there is with the stable branch, um, and a lot of automation and scripting gate infrastructure and stuff like that. Does the move to containers make that less important, or is it still is it still critical going forward? So, yeah, containers definitely simplify the problem. Um, at that point, should we get to the point where OpenStack makes a declaration that all services will be installed independently in their own containers, and there will be, you don't ever have to worry about Nova and Neutron disagreeing about what libraries they have, then, yeah, requirements does become largely redundant. At that point, it really is just about sanity checking license compatibility, and um, yeah, it definitely becomes simpler. Um, on the requirements side, we're taking, we've had a fairly strict mandated process for how teams work with the requirements team and what that looks like for their requirements files and it's been a bit limiting so this cycle we're focusing on building some flexibility into the process so that projects that don't necessarily want to install exactly the same version have the ability to detect co-installable versions so the end game is still the same it's just the implementation is more flexible what did you get done during pipe? Is, is your job just maintenance, or are you are you implementing new things? Um, yeah, it's basically maintenance. But in order to do that maintenance efficiently, I spend a lot of time writing tools for myself and other people to consume to track our progress. Right. Um, for instance, one of the things we do on the stable team is. At the end of a branch's life cycle, we have to go around and clean it up, right? So I write, write tools to work out whether a project has a lot of changes that need to get merged before we end of life their branch, and if we end of life their branch, what the repercussions for the gate are, and um, if project A has an undeclared dependency on project B, and we remove project B but not project A, what that's going to look like. Is it going to break? Does it need to address it in the or whatever? So it's, I did get to scratch that development itch by writing tools for myself and other people to consume. So those tools, and you know, I've wondered this about things like Zool that are incredibly complex, but the, the tools that you're doing, are they OpenStack specific or are they things that, that can be of general interest to other projects? Because this isn't a, a problem that's unique to us. No, absolutely not. But sadly, our implementation is a little bit different to everybody else's. And I think that's going to be the same for them. Right? So um, the tools are specific to OpenStack in that they consume data and um, create, obtain state based on the context of an, a project within OpenStack. Right. So like we definitely have a stable slash series branch. Right. So I can from that I know what release that was and I can make further predictions of when it's going to go. And uh, looking forward to Queens, is there anything that you're going to be focused on in the, in the coming cycle? Yeah, so um, I am actually looking forward to Queens. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, um, I'm, I'm currently only the, the stable PTL. Last cycle, I was also the requirements PTL. Uh, so I've got a little bit of extra free time there, right? Um, I recently uh, switched employers to Red Hat, and what we're focusing on there is enabling multi-architecture cloud. So you don't have to just have uh, x86 or Power PC in your cloud environment, you can now mix them. Um, so I'm looking forward to making that a reality and some of the challenges I'm going to face. Um, if, uh, if somebody wanted to be involved with your work, I mean, is this a one-person show or, or are you looking for, for uh, other people that contribute. Oh, I'm always looking for other people. So where do we go to find out about it and to, uh, to raise our hand? Raise your hand, you jump on the OpenStack Stable IRC channel. Uh, it's a bit sparse, tends to, if, if you get on there during Australian business hours, you're likely to find me. Um, if you get on there while I'm asleep, you're likely to have to wait for me to reply until I come back. Um, but yeah, we're definitely looking for people that are willing to do the reviews, uh, and understand the stable policy and process, uh, particularly if you've got good or can obtain good infrastructure skills. Because really, the stable job 
ends up being a lot about the infrastructure. All right, thanks a lot. And I guess I'll see you in Sydney. Absolutely. All right.